Welcome to my lecture online. The next method to consider is what we call the Euler method or the Euler equation, also known as the Cauchy equation. Let's take a look at the general case. So here again we have a homogeneous equation and again we're only doing the homogeneous part here. We have the general form of t squared y double prime plus a times t y prime plus b times y. a and b are simply constants and of course we have the t squared and the t here and set equal to zero. We then convert that to what we call the standard form where we divide everything by the coefficient of y double prime which gives us y double prime plus a over t y prime plus b over t squared times y. When you see an equation in that form, we use the Euler equation method to solve that differential equation. What that means is we're going to assume a solution of this form, y is equal to t to the r, where r is greater than zero, is a solution to the equation. Then if we take the first derivative of that, we get r t to the r minus one, and then here we get the second derivative of that, and we plug those back into the standard form of the equation. That gives us the following equation. If we then take that equation and we multiply this left and right side by t squared, then we end up with this form of the equation. Notice we have a t to the r power, a t to the r power, and a t to the r power in all three terms on the left side of the equation, which means we can factor that out, and then we're left with an r squared minus r plus a r plus b, and if we collect the common terms right here, a minus one times r, we now have a quadratic equation, r squared, r to the first power, and r to the zero power. We can solve that quadratic equation for r, remember r is the root, is the exponent of the general form of the solution. If we then solve for r, we end up with two solutions. Now, those two solutions, for r can be either two real roots, a real double root, or two imaginary roots. If we end up with two real roots when we solve for r in this case, then the general solution for the homogeneous part of the equation is going to look like c1 times t to the r1 power plus c2 times t to the r2 power. It looks very similar to what we've seen before, except instead of having e here as the base, we have t as the base. If we have a real repeater root, the same root twice, then the solution will be c1 t to the r power plus c2 t to the r power times the natural log of t. So that's a little bit different from what we've seen before. And finally, if we have two imaginary roots, where the roots will be expressed as a plus or minus bi, of course, this a and b are not the same as these a and b's, they're different, then the solution will be c1 t to the a power times the cosine of b times the natural log of t plus c2 times t to the a power times the sine of b times the natural log of t. So those will be the three different solution sets that we can have using this earlier equation format for something that looks exactly like that. And of course the equation must look exactly like that. a and b can be constants. We have a t here and a t squared here in the denominator. So now let's do some examples of this so you can see how to actually apply that. But again, the method is very straightforward. Once you have the hang of that, it's a fairly good method to use for that type of equation, known as the Euler equation. And that's how it's done. 